Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you for joining me tonight on my channel where I love to bring you my best tips and tools to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I have four centerpiece DIYs for you. This first one is a birchwood neutral centerpiece using some birchwood scrapbook paper, some recycled cans, and a few other items. So I pulled two of each size, I've got three different sizes of cans here from my recycled uh, pantry, and I'm painting the bottoms with sandstone, and then I'm going to use this scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby that looks like birch bark, and I'm going to Mod Podge it onto the sides of my cans. I saw a picture of a centerpiece using actual pieces of birch wood, and I thought, you know what, I can make that without having to go find an actual tree and cut a tree down. So I'm Mod Podging the paper onto all six of these cans, and I am spritzing a little bit of water, I had already pre-cut the paper to match the height of each can. So this does take a little bit of time with the Mod Podge and spritzing water on your paper. I wasn't too concerned about getting air bubbles though because the pattern of the scrapbook paper with it being tree bark kind of hid any bubbles that there were. But just take your time, do a section at a time, and smooth it out as you go. And then when you get to that end piece, you're just gonna put a little Mod Podge underneath and then smooth it down with some more Mod Podge on top. I did go around the entire can again with Mod Podge just to make sure everything was sealed down and nice and uniform. So we're gonna do that on all six of our cans. So for the base for this centerpiece, I decided to use a Dollar Tree pizza pan. And looking back, I probably could have just left it the silver color. So if you don't want to paint it, go ahead and just leave it silver. But you can see I have now the pizza pan and I have all of my birch wood cans um, upside down. I'm going to add some of this glittery faux snow from Dollar Tree. Um, you could use Epsom salt if you don't want to use this glittery snow. And I'm just going to kind of put it in any of the spaces where the brown from the pan is still showing. This is why I said I could have just in the end left it silver. So the items I chose to add to my centerpiece, I got three of these LED Christmas lights or Christmas tree lights from Dollar Tree. I have some of the battery powered tea lights in some of the little glass votive holders. And you'll see, I'm just gonna kind of arrange things to get different heights and to get the different items in different places. Some of them are just the tea lights without the glass. I'm gonna add in some faux trees, some more of the little ones, and some pine cones as well. So this is really one of those projects where you just kind of collect a bunch of stuff and once you have the base of the birchwood cans, you can just kind of add whatever you'd like to it. I love how this turned out. I could leave this out literally all winter, especially if I just turn off the Christmas trees and just leave them as white trees. Thank you. 
For DIY number two, I'm going to make a wood crate candle centerpiece. I had some requests for some Dollar Tree wood DIYs. So I'm going to use four crates and two of these DIY snow scenes, as well as one tall pillar candle from Dollar Tree and some burlap. So all four of my wood crates here, I'm going to give them one good coat on the outside with white Waverly chalk paint. I'm not going to worry about painting the inside of the crates or the bottom. And I am going to go up a little bit on the lip here. You can see around the edge at the top as well. My Dollar Tree finally had these 3D craft kits out, so I grabbed a couple. I thought they'd be really fun to add around the outside of this centerpiece for some decoration. So I'm just taking out the pieces to kind of see what's here. I've never bought this before, so I wasn't quite sure. I know for sure I'm gonna use the tree trios and the houses, but I'm gonna cut off the little notches that are at the bottom. These are notched because there's another piece that comes in the kit that actually can stand all of these things up. But I'm gonna cut all those little notches off and then get ready to paint the trees and the houses as well. So I'm gonna use Waverly Fern Chalk Paint. I love this color, and I'm just gonna quickly give my tree trios here a coat on the front and the back because they will stick up on the other side of the, um, the box. You'll be able to see both sides, so I'm gonna paint both sides with Fern Green. Then for the houses, I decided to use crimson red. I'm gonna paint again both sides of the house. You'll see in a little bit, I will come back in later with black for the roof and the chimney as well. Now I'm gonna take all four of my crates and I'm gonna use wood glue and clamps and I'm gonna glue them together in a square. You're gonna see me use this square method in our final DIY as well. But just using some wood glue and clamping them together, you can see how I'm putting them all together in a square that's going to leave a small square hole in the center. While that is drying, I'm gonna take my pillar candle. All I had was a blue one, so that is one of the reasons I decided to wrap it in this red burlap ribbon. If you have a red candle or a white candle, um, you don't need to do this step, but I actually like how it looks with the burlap ribbon. So just putting some hot glue, I'm actually gonna wrap my candle twice with this burlap ribbon to hide as much as possible the blue color. And now that our crates are dry, I'm gonna take this thin, uh, I think it's about probably one and a half inch black and white check ribbon, and I'm gonna glue it around the outside of my box that I've made, mostly to cover up the holes that are on the short ends of the crates. So this is just gonna give a nice uniform look around the outside of our box. So like I said, I'm gonna come back in with a black Sharpie and just do the black roof lines and the chimneys of the two houses on both the front and the back. I'm also gonna use a little bit of the Sharpie on the little gift packages that I decided to also use, as well as the small green trees. So now taking my hot glue on each of the four sides of my box, 
I'm going to do the house in the middle on opposite sides, and I'm going to do the tree trios in the middle on the other two sides. Once I have those four things in place, I'm going to come back to the two sides that have the houses, and I'm going to add a small green tree and a package on either side of the house. And here's what our little box looks like with the ribbon and the wood images that we painted. I think it's so fun. The last thing I'm gonna do is take my candle and squeeze it in there. Now I just put some pine cones and greenery in here, but you could definitely use this to put some candy in as well to have out for the holidays. For DIY number three, we're going to make another centerpiece using some recycled cans, some of these tall battery-powered taper candles from Dollar Tree, as well as some stickers. So I'm going to take three more of these cans and I'm going to give them a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color Crimson. We're going to paint all three cans and let them dry completely. Once they're dry, I'm going to take my chippy brush and I'm going to just dry brush or messy paint, whatever you wanna call it, um, white, so that you can still see the red coming through, but the color of the cans now is mostly white. Once we get those painted, we'll let those dry completely as well. Then taking some poster sticker letters from Dollar Tree or any other large stickers you have, I believe these came from Hobby Lobby in the teaching section, I'm gonna put the stickers on my cans to spell out the word joy. Just apply all three of the stickers. And then once those are on there, I'm gonna use a little bit of Mod Podge just over the stickers for right now to make sure that they are sealed down completely. Then once the stickers were sealed down, I did take the Mod Podge around the entire can on all three cans just to give a nice uniform finish. Once those were dry, I'm gonna take some hot glue in the bottom of the can and I'm gonna press down a small block of floral foam. This is going to give us a base for our candles to poke into. And like I said, do this with all three of your cans. And I just like to get rid of that excess just so it's not floating around in there. Now, I'm not sure if Dollar Tree still has these tall taper candles, but they basically, you put two batteries in them, and then when you twist it all the way shut, the light comes on. So I keep them a little bit untwisted so that they're not on the whole time. I'm gonna fill in this space with some moss. Um, I started out with this brown stuff, but didn't have enough, so I filled in on top with some green, and I actually liked that much better. Then taking some of these garland ties, you can use the ones from Dollar Tree. These are the skinnier ones from Hobby Lobby. I needed one and then one extra little piece to go all the way around the base of these bigger cans. So I'm just hot gluing those in a couple places and then holding it. It does have a wire in it so it can bend to go around. Then I'm gonna take a thicker piece of jute twine and I'm gonna do the exact same thing but around the top rim of each can. Then taking a thinner jute twine, I'm gonna double it, and then I'm gonna make three small, simple bows that we can glue to the top, right at the center of that jute twine, going around the top of the can. Thank you. 
Then you can just set your cans with the candles on top of any sort of tray or plate. This is just one of those rectangular charger plates from Dollar Tree turned upside down. You could also use different candles of different heights for a varied look of this project. For DIY number four, we're going to make some lanterns out of tumbling tower blocks and use them as a centerpiece. So I'm going to use some candles, some tumbling tower blocks, a tray. Mostly here I'm showing you how to make these little lanterns. So here you can see I have six blocks and then two on each of the long sides. So that's ten blocks. For each lantern, you're going to need two of those. I'm going to call it platforms. It's going to be the base of your lantern and the top. So I have enough laid out here for three lanterns. The first thing I'm gonna glue together are these long pieces that are two blocks long. So again, just putting a little bit of wood glue, I'm gonna glue all of these long pieces together. And then for the six that are in the middle together, I'm gonna glue those first together in pairs. So three pairs. This is, I've found the key to making anything, building anything like this out of tumbling tower blocks, is to break it down into smaller sections, making sure you're getting everything adhered completely and also as straight as you possibly can. So that is all the blocks for one of these bases. Now that my pairs are dried, you see I'm gonna glue those together. So now I'm gluing my three pairs of blocks together to make the complete set of six. Once I have those lined up, I'm gonna put some glue on the side of my two long pieces I made, and we're gonna squish it all together. So there's glue there, glue on the other one, and we're gonna line it all up and squish it together. So like I said, you'll need two of those for each lantern. The next thing you're gonna need for each lantern is four more sticks of two blocks, okay? So I've got 12 here. We're gonna just glue them together like we did before, gluing the two together on the long side. For each lantern, you also need a square. This is just the exact same way that we glued the wood crates together for DIY number two. So each of my lanterns is gonna get one of these squares of four blocks. And I'm showing you how I'm gluing them together, making sure they're all lined up and straight. I also have some single blocks here. So for the two long sticks, I'm attaching two of them together with two single blocks, one at the top and one at the bottom. So I'm gonna make two of these O's for each lantern. So each lantern so far has two platforms, two O's, and the square. And now I'm just going to sand all my pieces lightly to get off any excess wood glue. Once I've sanded all my pieces, I am gonna paint everything with my black Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to do uh, the top, the bottom, the insides, the outsides, all the edges because I want it all painted before we glue our lanterns together. All right, so to glue our lanterns together, I've got one of the O's laying down and you can see I'm going to take two single blocks and I'm gluing them to the bottom corners. Then I'm going to take my other O and I'm going to connect it to the other side of those single blocks. So you're gonna do this for each of your three lanterns. Once that's dry and not gonna fall apart, you're gonna glue that to the base, one of your platforms. So I'm kind of seeing where it's gonna go and then I'm putting some glue on the platform and placing the middle piece down so that it can line up and dry completely. Then on my other platform for this lantern, I'm gonna glue the little square to the top. So now we have our entire lantern in two pieces, the bottom there with the middle holes and the top with the square. So the last thing I'm gonna do is put glue on my top and flip my lantern over onto the top. And isn't this so cute? You could put handles on them if you want, 
but I just love these and they're super fun to make. You can make them in any color or theme. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Please let me know which of these centerpieces was your favorite. And if you want to see more next week, take care. We'll see you next time.